Hi everyone. Today we are going to be covering lesson 4.10 using special right triangles to determine the surface area of a regular pyramid. You can find content related to this in OMHS along with some practice problems. But I do want to go over just some basics that you'll see there and some practice problems here too. So remember, a pyramid. A pyramid is defined as a three-dimensional shape that has sides that are triangles and a polygon base. The base doesn't have to be a square. The base doesn't have to be a rectangle. The base could be a pentagon. The base could be an octagon. As long as you have a polygon base and sides that are triangles, you're looking at a pyramid. And there's two different formulas that you can see with pyramids. The first one says LA. LA is lateral area. So the lateral area is the area of just the triangles. The surface area is the area of all of the surfaces. So the area of the triangles plus the area of the base. The lateral area is one half times L times P. L is the slant height. The slant height goes from the tippy top of the pyramid to the base of the pyramid, not along an edge, but actually along the face. P is the perimeter of the base. So whatever shape your base is, you would add up the lengths of the sides and that would be the perimeter. And capital B, so that's what we see down here, is the area of the base. So that's why your surface area, the formula looks just like lateral area. The only thing is we're adding the area of the base because the lateral area does not include the base, but the surface area does. Okay, so remembering what these things stand for will be very helpful when finding area. And if you don't remember them, no worries, they are on your formula sheet. So if you look, scroll down, here's a pyramid and you, they're on your formula sheet, so you don't have to memorize them. And if you don't remember, you are welcome to look in the picture. And also there's a little key here on the back in case you don't remember. So like, I don't remember what capital B stands for. There it is. I don't remember what LA stands for, SA. They're all there for you. Okay, so if you, you don't have to memorize this formula, it is on a formula sheet. You're allowed to use the formula sheet on any assessment, including the SOL. What's important is we know how to use the formula. So let's practice that. We'll start with an easy one. Okay. I like to write down the formula because one, I don't memorize it since I don't need to. So I write it down. One half L P plus B. L is slant height, P is perimeter of the base, capital B is area of the base. So I like to write down what each one stands for. Right. Each one is equal to. Slant height goes from the tippy top to the base. So the slant height in this pyramid is 11.7. The perimeter is the perimeter of the base. The perimeter of the base here is going to be 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8. It has four sides and they're all the same. Or you could do just 8 times 4. It's going to be the same thing. And then the area of the base, well, the base here is a rectangle or really a square because it has congruent sides here. So that'll be eight times eight or 64. So now I can use all of those numbers to plug into my surface area equation. One half times 11.7 times 32 plus 64. And I'll just type that straight into my calculator. And after I do that, I get 251.2. Now I have to remember my units. I'm finding an area. So my units here are meters squared because area always has square, square units. All right. I would like you to try number two. Go ahead and try number two. It's the same process, different numbers. Okay, you should get 99 inches squared. Your slant height was 7.4, perimeter is 20, and the area of your base is 25. All right, now sometimes one of those pieces of information is missing and we have to use other information in the picture to figure it out. So let's see what we know here. I know that the height of the pyramid is three feet, but I don't know the slant height. The slant height would be here. So slant height is missing. 
perimeter, well, I know perimeter. This is going to be 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16, or 16 times 4. And so the perimeter is going to be 64. And I can figure out the area of the base, 16 times 16, so 256. So the only piece of information I'm missing is the slant height. So let's look at our picture. Do you see the right triangle there? The slant height is what's missing, so I'm just going to call that L. The height of this right triangle is 3. And the base is going to be half of 16, so 8. So now because I'm only missing one side and I know the other two, I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem to solve for that slant height. The slant height is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So L squared will equal 9 plus 64 is 73. Square root both sides. L is the square root of 73. Now I have everything I need to calculate the surface area. So the surface area will be 1 half times the square root of 73 times 64 plus 256. Now I'll just use a calculator to evaluate this thing. I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth just to make it as exact as possible. And I get 529.41 feet squared. Move on to the next one. Okay, so now let's get to what this whole unit or whole section was actually about. It wasn't just about finding the surface area of a pyramid, but using special right triangles or even trig to find that area. So because we have some right triangles going on in our pyramid, that means that we have the potential for having missing parts where we would have to use special rights or even trig to find our missing parts. Now, one thing that is missing from this picture, and I was a little disappointed with that, is they didn't tell you that this was a square pyramid, but it is. So you can go ahead and know that this is a square pyramid. Okay, so it's a square pyramid. All right, what we need in, to find the surface area of our pyramid is we need a slant height, a perimeter of a base, and an area of a base. So clearly we are missing our slant height. Slant height is labeled as FA, but there's no number there. So we're going to need to find slant height. Perimeter we can find, okay, because this will be 12 times 4. So the perimeter is 48. That's the perimeter of the base which means we can also find the area of the base, 12 times 12. So all we're missing is the slant height. So if, I'm, if I redraw this right triangle right here, I'm looking at a 30, 60, 90. And I know that this piece has to be six since this whole thing is 12. So let's find the height. So we're going to use our special right triangles to do that. So this will be root 3, 1, and 2. x corresponds to root 3, and 6 corresponds to 1. So x is 6 root 3. So our slant height is 6 root 3. I could have called that L if I really wanted to. Now I have everything I need for my formula. The surface area is 1 half times 6 root 3, times 48, plus 144. We'll use our calculator to find that. We get 393.42 centimeters squared. And the last example we have here, I see a right triangle going on in this pyramid. The name of this pyramid is a hexagonal print pyramid. Why? Because its base is a hexagon. All right, so let's see what we have here. We're going to need the equation for surface area. We don't know L, so that's missing. Perimeter, okay, this is a regular polygon. So the perimeter will be 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16, six times, or just 16 times six. So the perimeter of my base is 96. 
And we need to know the area of the base. So the area of the base is also missing. So we're gonna need to figure that out also. So let's start with the base. So to find the area of the base, I'm gonna actually look at this triangle right here, triangle SCR. I'm gonna drop down a height or an apothem. I know this is 60. I don't know the apothem, but I know that this from here to here is 16, since all of the sides are equal, which means that this piece is eight. So if I look at just half that triangle, I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and I wanna know the height. So I'm gonna compare this to a 30, 60, 90, one, root three and two, eight corresponds to one and X corresponds to root three. So the height of this guy is eight root three. Now I can find the area of this whole triangle because this entire thing is 16. So the area of the triangle is a one half times the base times the height. Eight times eight is 64, so this is 64 root three, yes. And now I can find the area of the entire polygon, let's say the hexagon, that's gonna be the area of that one triangle times the six triangles that are in it. So this becomes 384 root three. So that is the area of the base. Wonderful. Now we need to find the slant height. Okay. We're looking at the right triangle that makes up that slant. Okay. I know that the height is eight root three and we don't know this length. That's not the length, we want this length right here, right? Because the slant height goes from the tippy top to the edge, not to a vertex. So I'm looking at this triangle right here. Okay, well, we already found the height of one of these little triangles. It was eight root three. So the height here is eight root three, and so was the apothem. So this is eight root three. So now I just need to find the slant height. I'm gonna use Pythagorean theorem. I could also use special right triangles if I want to, because this is a right triangle and these are congruent. I know this is 45 and 45, but I'm gonna use the Pythagorean theorem. Eight root three squared plus eight root three squared is 384. Square root both sides to get the slant by itself. And the square root of 384 can actually be broken into the square root of 64 times the square root of six, which is eight root six. So the slant height is eight root six. Now I have everything I need to actually answer the problem. So the surface area will be one half times eight root six times 96 plus 384 root three. And you get some really ugly decimals here. You end up actually with 384 root six plus 384 root three. And you get about 1,606 units squared. So we were missing a lot of information here. We were missing the area of the base. So we had to use what we knew about finding the area of a hexagon. We were also missing the slant height. So we had to look at the slant height in the picture. And since we already knew that the apothem or the height of my little triangle here was eight root three, I could use that in the Pythagorean theorem to find my slant height. Then I had all of the pieces I needed to find the surface area. This does take practice. I highly recommend looking at OMHS and doing the content for 4.10. Today's attendance word is right. You never know when a right triangle is going to appear. So Pythagorean theorem, trig, or even special right triangles could be 
could happen at any time. Anytime you see a right triangle, those things are possible. Today's attendance word is right. Please spell it correctly on the attendance quiz. And if you need help or you would like some extra practice, go ahead and come to office hours or reach out for some extra help. Have a great day, everyone.